All right guys, so this video is about the seizure medications and the mechanism of action. So it's a good video. I think it has a lot of information that you'll see on the step one. So I uh, hope it's helpful. All right guys, so it reads, which of the following medications would be the best long-term treatment choice? Okay, and then when you look through the answer choices, I see carbamazepine, lamotrigine, ethosuximide, lorazepam, and valproic acid. So I'm getting a feel for the kind of a seizure medications. So the question reads, uh, a seven-year-old Hispanic male is brought to the emergency room by his mother after a recent episode of loss of consciousness. She states her son fell on the ground and started shaking and jerking. She also reports that her son's teacher last year reported he would often stare out into outer space during class. <clears throat> Currently, the boy is frightened about being in the hospital, but states he would like to just go home and play. After a few hours of monitoring, the boy returns to baseline level of functioning and is discharged from the emergency room. Which of the following medications would be best long-term treatment choice? So <clears throat> it looks like you got two things in the play, right? You got this, the guy started shaking and jerking, um, which is kind of like, you know, more along the lines of a legit seizure. And then you got this thing from last year about the teacher saying he's, look, he's looking like he's staring out in outer space. So I know right now this outer space when he's staring, you know, I know you want to jump all over the, uh, the absence seizures, right? And that makes sense. But does this explain uh, the, where he just uh, she fe he fell on the ground and started shaking and jerking? You know, an absence seizure really wouldn't explain that. So there's got to be something else going on. So let's just take a quick second to review the, the basics of, of seizures. And you can have partial uh, seizures. And again, uh, if, you know, if you're in the brain and there's just a little area that gets uh, impacted, typically one, one spot, you know, you're thinking more of the, the partial seizures. And then if you have something that affects the, the, the global perspective, you know, then it's more of a generalized seizure. Now, the partials can be broken down into simple as well as complex. And the difference is, you know, the, the again, single portion of the simple, no loss of consciousness, you know, usually one body part kind of affected. Uh, no confusion, uh, no post-dictal uh, issues. And in the complex, usually associated with temporal lobe, okay, you'll always associate that. Mood changes, uh, you can have loss of conscious, and you can have like a post-dictal, okay? So there's a difference between the two. A lot of very quick ones, you know, no loss of conscious, loss of conscious, no post-dictal, post-dictal, but it's one portion of the brain. Now over in the generalized section, you got to be thinking uh, the basics, the basic three here, the tonic clonic, okay, the myoclonic, and then the absence seizures, okay, and again, the absence staring, uh, there's no postictal issues, the uh, myoclonic, you just got to think brief, you know, think brief jerking, usually in the morning time, uh, typically, and, you know, sometimes they, you'll see questions where it's sleep deprivation can cause that. Uh, but you can have loss of body tone, uh, again, where they can kind of uh, just drop to the ground. And, you know, again, stress can, can cause this. So those are your myo, myoclonic. So if so far, it's pretty easy, right? Partial, one part of the brain, simpler, complex. The difference is loss of conscious, loss of conscious, no loss of conscious, uh, post-dictal, no post-dictal. And then generalized, you have tonic-clonic, myoclonic, which is just your stress, brief jerking, they fall to the ground, um, and then absence is your staring. And then you can have the, the tonic-clonic, of course, there you have the loss of conscious, you got the post-dictal, and that's like uh, kind of like a legit seizure per se. You know, I they're all not legit, but this is like, you know, your classic stuff you might always uh, stereotypical. All right, so anyways, that's your basics of the seizures, and we can make a video that maybe cl cleans that up a little bit. But, but each one of these is treated by a different medication. Now, for the most part. Now, the partial, okay, the partial, which, you know, one part of the brain, we're going to go with carbamazepine for the steps, okay? Carbamazepine. And, the, and what I want to teach here is the mechanism behind this because it's really not that bad. But uh, carbamazepine, you better be thinking trigeminal, it also treats trigeminal neuralgia, which is what? Trigeminal neuralgia, cranial nerve five, okay? 
try, and then trigeminal neuralgia, stabbing pain, usually affected when people are brushing. You see that question where it says they're brushing their teeth, they're shaving, they're chewing food, and get this sharp stabbing pain. You better be thinking trigeminal neuralgia. You better be thinking carbamazepine, okay? And we'll, we'll tell you the mechanism here in just a second. Uh, the also difference between the issues got in with carbamazepine because it's the it's the first line for this partial stuff is you can get a granulocytosis okay you can get a plastic you know a plastic anemia so what what lab are you gonna do as a routine every now and then CBC that's the kind of question that they would ask on the you know they may they may describe something up here that's a partial seizure and a medication is started, which is first line, which of the following lab works would you order? And you better be jumping all over CBC because you know carbamazepine, which is what you would have chosen, can cause agranulocytosis, okay? And the other thing about carbamazepine, it's kind of dirty in the sense, P450 inducer, and of course that revs things up, uh, makes other medications not as effective, uh, lower dosing and stuff like that, other lower doses ultimately of the, of the other medications because it because it induces them okay all right so then we're over on the on the uh, generalized seizures and of course for the absence it's the one you always think about right oh i know book wise it's ethosuximide good okay but you can also treat it with uh valproic acid okay know that very important and then uh when it comes to myoclonic seizures you better be thinking just about proic acid. Okay, first line. But notice there's a, there's there's an overlap between these guys. And then when it comes to the tonic clonic, I mean there's you, you get a bunch of them: phenytoin, carbamazepine, valproate, valproic acid. So it's not like best. There's one single best one. So there's multiple in this one. Okay. So again, we're talking seizures here. I mean, again, we can make a whole separate video cleaning this up. But really, what I want to talk on here is the mechanism, which is gonna, well which is gonna allow us the, the, the real learning point for making this video. Now, to answer this question, uh, let's come back to answer this question just a second because I really wanna hit this. This is your take home point, man. This, this, this is why you actually watch this video. And this is all stolen from this guy. I think his name's Armando. Uh, I'll, I'll put the link in at the bottom of the video. But anyways, when you're learning the seizure medications, you know, you have the, there's two things in the brain, right? that you either got the thing that, you got the guy that excites the brain, which is glutamate, okay? And then you got the inhibitory, GABA, right? Glutamate excites, GABA inhibits. So I'm either gonna release some GABA or I'm gonna release some glutamate, and hopefully there's like a balance. And then on the receiving end, I want you, because remember, we tell stories in this thing, right? On the receiving end, I want you to have this neuron down here, that's either gonna have, it's gonna have these channels, right? And just work with me here on this, okay. You got these three channels that I want, and we draw them like that, all right? So this is the AMPA, this is the N, uh, NM receptors, I should say, NMDA receptor, so the NMDA receptor, we got the AMPA, receptor and then of course this is the GABA A receptor okay and this is a neuron so this this guy right here is either going to be uh, ex, you know giving glutamate to excite him or GABA to inhibit this process because this is where we're going to get that uh, say depolarization to allow the neuron to fire and if we have too much firing of the neuron what's that cause that causes seizures right too much firing causes the seizures so let's look at the normal and then we can see how medications can impact it. So up on the glutamate guy, you know, for him to release in the vesicle, for him to release the glutamate, you got these things up here. You got the, first of all, you got the sodium channel, okay? You got the sodium channel and then when he kind of goes in, down at the, more toward the end, then you'll have calcium come in. Okay, voltage gate, right? Voltage gate of sodium channel, voltage gate of calcium channel. And once this, you know, boom, it hits, it goes down, hits the calcium, boom, goes there, and then all of a sudden it can release the glutamate. Okay? So sodium, calcium, release the glutamate. Now, the glutamate will come over here to the AMPA uh, receptor, and then all of a sudden it'll, uh, the channel, it'll open, 
okay? It'll open, sodium rushes in, positive charge, right? Over here on the NMDA, calcium will uh, come on in, okay? But once, once the glutamate attaches there, this guy opens up, boom. So now I got him, sodium, and, and calcium on the inside, and that's gonna make the actual potential go, fire off, boom, 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 boom. And if we have too much, we get seizures. So we can make medications that in, can impact the sodium and the calcium, right? We can have medications that will ultimately affect those guys, which will then, you know, allow, you know, allow us to kind of mod modify it. So when it comes to these, we're thinking, oops, right here, carbamazepine. So carbamazepine, we're thinking phenytoin, and then we're thinking lamotrogene, lamictal, right? Lamotrogene. So if I think carbamazepine, phenytoin, lamotrogene, I'm thinking those affect the sodium. That's why these are seizure medications, right? Because if I can affect the sodium, I therefore I stop the party here, I don't release glutamate, I don't have the action potential in firing, right? So that's how carbamazepine, phenytoin, lamictal, uh, lamotrogene affect seizures, they, imp they impact the sodium. And then if I said, well, lamotrigine here, along with the ethosuximide, the one we use for absence seizures, they affect calcium. Okay, so lamictal does both, but lamotrigine and ethosuximide affect the calcium. If I affect the calcium and inhibit him, I don't release glutamate, I don't fire off the AMPA or the NMDA to let sodium and calcium in respectively. I, then I can impact the seizures. Um, so that, that's how glutamate gets affected. Now I can go over here to GABA. Remember we said GABA is the inhibitory, but, uh, but if I can release GABA going across, when GABA gets to the GABA A and, and opens up, what, what goes in? Chloride, right? Negative, negative charge. So what's gonna happen? He's gonna impact sodium and calcium and, and, and kind of throttle it back a little bit, right? Because if I can get uh, the chloride in chloride ion in there, it's going to reduce this guy from firing. And if this guy doesn't fire too much, I can reduce my seizures. So, what medications affect the opening of the chloride of the the GABA receptor and affecting chloride channel going in the chloride channel? Well, as you know, benzodiazepines, benzo benzodiazepines, and then uh, barbiturates, barbiturates. Okay, right? Benzos increase the frequency of the firing. They increase the frequency of the firing, so more chloride stuff goes in, right? If I get more chloride, more negative, it's going to reduce it. This guy's not going to fire. Barbiturates increase the duration of it. Okay? And then, but that's all if the GABA, GABA comes across, and then when he gets released, he gets kind of sent back in here, and uh, there's that medication in your book that says it, re, it, it helps prevent the reuptake of GABA, so then GABA hangs out longer, keeping the channel open. Um, that's that Tia, Tia Gabine. Now, again, I don't know how to pronounce that, guys. This is more of a book, you know, I don't, I don't really see this one so much. I work a lot with the Benzos, work a lot with these other guys, not so much with him. But that's how it works, okay? You got the glutamate and GABA. And if you know the mechanism, sodium, calcium, um, release the glutamate, which affect the AMPA and NMDA. Sodium and calcium come in. It would fire off naturally. GABA is inhibit inhibitory, slows it down. How's it inhibited? By, in by increasing the chloride in there. And then if you just know where to put the medications, you can get all you can get any question they ask on mechanism right. And then you have the valproic acid, also known as Depakote, okay? Active metabolites valproate. He affects multiple ones, okay? He's going to affect the this guy and they also say he affects GABA so it's a little bit more broader um, and depending on what book you read and that's why he that's why he's not in any particular one but it affects sodium and GABA um, but good for seizures uh, good for mood as well right because because we're, we're calming things down we're calming it down we're not having the fire off this potential so if I go back to this question which is why you're here in the first place this kid appeared to have obstinate seizures, but that would not just totally explain the starting shaking and jerking, right? He's got another, another, another one here. Which one of these would it be? I'm going with the myoclonic. What medication would be the long-term choice that's going to affect myoclonic and the absence? 
the valproic acid. Answer choice E. Okay? Guys, if there's a takeaway from this video, um, it's, it's understanding this. If you know the mechanism, because there's going to be a lot of questions, there's going to be a lot of questions, and I'm going to make more videos on those daily questions about mechanism of action of what medication you would choose um, to get these seizure questions right. Hope you liked the video, guys.